The Harley escape sequence was so fun and mental. Do we have the window in here? Where is yes. the window? Yeah, right behind her. So it's behind her. So we see Harley look up. She's been faking. Bam! She grabs him around the neck. Camera is moving up and down. As he's like halfway lifted up, she snaps his neck in pretty much silhouette. That was definitely one of the, probably the most difficult stunt work I've done. I knew that if I was gonna have Harley Quinn in a movie, I wanted it to really be the Harley Quinn that I love. And I wanted to see that fully expressed on screen. And I wanted to see her kick ass in a way like that she never had before. My action sequences need to have a build to it. The idea here is that she goes through four other areas and every single one is a different action sequence. I feel like I've done a lot of stunt work at this point, but I was really nervous for that because there was just a lot to do. I think we shot it in like four days. This is a full journey for her in a span of a few minutes. And we're on her toes, and this is where everything needs to be worked out so perfectly in terms of our height, the way where she's hanging, how tall she is, how tall the guy is. In the scene where she takes the keys up and puts the keys in the lock and gets herself out, that's really Margot doing that. He was like, okay, so we're obviously gonna cut away and blah, 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 and I was like, give me a go. I think I could actually, I think I could actually undo this lock just with my feet right now. And then, yeah, and then I could do it. I really appreciated that he wanted to do so much practically, especially the action and stunt work. Action! Really long time I've worked on the process of trying to do everything in camera. James was totally in for that. And then we're gonna that's, shoot that, all the stats, that's up like inserts, jump, jump, yeah, yeah. jump. We have that first beat, which is pretty rough and gritty. And then she goes into the next room where it suddenly becomes a ballet. We'll travel in with her and then go around her back with her as she's shooting. That was hard. The clock, you know, shooting in that circular sort of chamber, choreography wise. One, two, three, four, five. From that minute forward, it is a dance as much as it is an action sequence. Twirling what we call the umbrellas of Sherberg shot above her, where her dress is twirling as she's shooting. She was able to offer up changes. Do you want me to be slightly faster, slightly slower? And we were talking frames, you know, just fractions of a second. Keep twirling. Yeah. But then somehow had the, the, a little bit more stilted arms. You know, yeah. So as opposed to just going like this. Okay. One of the little boards says, this is where Guy North earns his keep. Each time she goes into the room, she's using different things in the battle. This is Harley. She is incredibly gifted when it comes to fighting. Because of course, when you're training, I'm just wearing exercise clothes, so everything was easy. And then you get in a costume and you're like, Shit, I have 15 layers of chul here. So we were kind of trying to come up with ways to keep the dress long for when I'm spinning, because he wanted to do an overhead shot of that. But then also to do the stuff after that, we had to rip a bit of the skirt off, and then we incorporated that into the fight. Starts with the fight choreography. I go in there after they do the fight choreography, I give notes. This. He's got to get up for later. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's standing up and then holding up his knife and staggering towards her, and then we'll be able to see what he's doing. We decide what shots we're gonna use, then they add to it, then I come back again, we do more shots, more notes. Oh, 
And it ends with probably the most shocking moment in the movie and something that we wondered about even, you know, putting in the movie, which is when she slits the guy's throat. <laughs> you see on Margot's face that she's just, it's not even what she's thinking about in that moment. That's just her walking across the street. You would feel in any normal film, that's it. She's kind of done it all. And the guns, the machine guns were like loud. Can't you know, just a moment of a slow mo walk of her looking cool. Well, 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 drop. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! So the problem is, is that the dolly's moving like dolly speed, and they're moving phantom slow motion. There are high speed um, rail routes. You can really fire a camera now. Okay, great. And then her walking forward and firing at all the flowers and unicorns and shit come out of her. She's seriously in a battle and suddenly ooh, she sees her shiny javelin. So they're kind of like, what the, should we fucking run or what, what should we do? Why something feels more visceral, it often does come down to whether it was happening practically or not. <laughs> you can do amazing things. With, with CGI and VFX, but it's different. When you go for a take, your adrenaline's through the roof. You peaked. <laughs> it's just epic. I mean, the whole sequence, the music and the visuals and the flowers that splurt out. And it's just, it was so, so fun. It's probably my favorite thing I've shot too. And I think it's worthy of Harley Quinn. And it's worthy of Margot, who can really do almost anything. <laughs>